Buongiorno everybody, he's here and he's perfect, Joe Willock is finally a Maggie. After weeks and weeks since the end of last season, he's here, he signed on a long term deal believed to be roughly around 6 years for £25 million, which in my opinion, after the impact he had for us last season and the general going rate for young English talents, um, I think that's an absolute bargain, um, hopefully it'll turn out to be a bargain. Um, and not another Joel Linton situation. But yeah, he's really happy to be here. He said he's absolutely buzzing to be here. He loved his time here last season and he's really, really happy to be back. Obviously, he thanked Arsenal and said that right now, just he's really thankful for everything that everyone did at Arsenal for him. But now is the time to move on and move to a new club. And obviously, where better than Newcastle United? Well, I could think of a few better places in Newcastle United right now. But for us, black and white, I think he'll be loved up here by the fans. He'll be revered. He will just be absolutely loved if he continues the same way that he did last season. Um, the youngest player ever to score in seven consecutive matches. So hopefully he continues that form. It's not just a purple patch this season, but every the Arsenal fans that I've spoken to are really gutted to have let him go, um, even though he wasn't fitting in Arteta's system. So... I think we've got a good player on our hands. I really do. We saw that last season. It wasn't just, you know, a three-game thing. He did it the, throughout the whole of his loan spell. He was absolutely brilliant. He just got the fans back on board. He hasn't played in a full St. James's Park yet, so that's going to be absolutely incredible for him to see that. Um, and he's just going to be absolutely applauded. He's obviously not going to experience that on Sunday because he didn't sign in time because the article on um nufc website said that he didn't sign in time but he is available for the aston villa game so hopefully you know this first game maybe we could have made him we don't know that yet we'll not know till after sunday but hopefully you know he continues his form from last season because i think that'll be brilliant and he's just the type of player that newcastle fans love because he'll try for the shirt he loves wearing the shirt and he'll be proud to do it so that is great Steve Bruce obviously has came out and said that he's over the moon with the signing. Um, I think any of us would be. He's the number one target. Um, not entirely too sure about the praise for Lee Charlie in there, though. He's like, you know, Lee Charlie's gone above and beyond to get this deal over the line. Um, I mean, how is Steve? Like, it could have been done weeks ago. If he was the number one target, it could have been done weeks ago. But he'll come back in for this season, despite the fact it should have been done weeks ago, and he should have been done before the game on Sunday because he hasn't had loads and loads of pre-season. He has played and he has scored, but not a lot. Um, Obviously, he hasn't been training with the Newcastle squad, which is a little bit of a worry. Um, Graham Jones has only recently just come back and who obviously worked with Joe roughly around the same time as Joe joined. So hopefully he comes in, makes a little bit of an impact, works again with him. Joe hasn't had the chance to consistently work with players, the likes of St. Maxman, the likes of Callum Wilson, because they were injured at different times throughout the season when Joe was here. So if he's got that, we've got Almiron to come back. So I really think that this could be great for us. It doesn't just, you know, hide the fact or disguise the fact that there's about six other positions that we need to fill up now. In my opinion, I think we need a forward, another forward. We need um, a left back, maybe right back cover, a centre back since we've let Lejeune and um, Kel Watts go out on loan. Obviously, Lejeune's gone on a permanent now. So, yeah, we could do with another couple of signings. We're in for some. Whether or not we get them is a completely different story. We've dragged this one out long enough, you know, uh, what we do with the rest, I don't know. Because this is a permanent deal, I'm expecting a couple of loans to come through. Um, because obviously we assumed that this was maybe a loan, but in Steve Bruce came out and said that that's what they initially tried for. Arsenal weren't having it. Obviously, they've wanted to cash in because they're looking to sign the likes of Odegaard or a Madison. So they've wanted to cash in and 25 million of them is probably gold dust right now um, based on the fact that Joe Willock wasn't even getting in their team. So that'll be good to them. Not that I want to help them out in any, any way, but, you know, just looking from a business perspective. Um, he's going to wear the number 28 shirt, which is what he had when he was on loan last season. So I'm assuming a couple of 28 sh new shirts to fly out before the beginning of the season now that that's confirmed. Um, I'm really, really excited about it. I know I might seem miserable. Um, and if anyone wants to go and check out the overlap fan debate that I attended on behalf of the Magpie channel and um, Newcastle United with Gary Neville, Kino and Carragher, um, we did obviously speak about it and I was very down you know this is before the Joe Willock deal was announced so I said oh the potential Joe Willock deal 
um, because a few days ago it was apparently miles away and now suddenly it's happened. So football's a very fickle game. We don't know what's happening with it most at the best of times, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I was very down. I thought I really wasn't looking forward to the start of the season. The fan hope survey that Sky Bet ran showed that Newcastle United fans were the most miserable and the most negative about the start to the season. Also, how the fuck... There was, a, there was literally a... So, like another survey done about who the best manager in the Premier League was. Steve Bruce was third bottom. How? Who the hell has voted for him to be the Premier League's best manager? Arteta was below him. And that L Lage or Lage, whatever he's called, who has just gone to Wolves, he was bottom because obviously he hasn't um, managed in the Premier League yet. What the hell? Who the hell is voting for Steve Bruce to be pre Premier League's best manager? I don't even know. That's a whole different story though. Um... But he said the deal, it's the deal that he wanted, um, and it happened. So I just hope we're in the market for another. I've seen, obviously, we've seen Bubakar was um, mentioned, Rob Holden's mentioned, but that's kind of been, that's been flattened by Arsenal and sources now saying that that's not happening. Um, still worried that we're going to end up with the likes of Phil Jones at this point. <laughs> like, that's been on the cards for a good two years. Um, but yeah, just another couple of quality signings, whether they're loans, whether they're not, um, will absolutely help the cause 100% Joe Willock's creativity the energy he brings to the squad and just in general in terms of the team when we're playing Steve Bruce kind of used him as a little bit of an impact sub last season which we maybe weren't happy about but it worked in the end um I know that he's going to be a staple key player for this campaign because the business that everybody else has done around us is concerning when we're only you know we've only done Willock at this point um I know Manchester United have only done Sancho but that's like a different kettle of fish and they've got a really really decent squad anyway so we, we've only done the one sign at the moment so that's slightly concerning when you think about it in that sense because as I say there are area, other areas that we really need to build on before we go into that, this campaign with hope and with positivity because right now Joe Willock Yes, he's practically single-handedly kept us up last season, but he's a small fish in a very, very murky swamp right now. So we've got to do that. We're starting the season off with Freddie Woodman, which, to be fair, I'm quite excited about because he obviously hasn't had much Premier League game time with us, um, if at all, I don't know. Um, he's been in the Championship. Now's his time to shine. He has been spoke about as being the natural number, you know, number one in the future. So with Dubravka's injury, Darlow's still not fully fit. So I'm really excited to see him come in. I'm gutted Joe's not going to be available for the game at the weekend, but it might be a blessing in disguise because then if he's available for Aston Villa, he has time to train, he has time to, you know, fix up with the squad before he actually gets into a game because I don't want him to start off on a negative note. Um, not that I think that he will at all, but yeah, this is just a really, really good day for Newcastle United in general. Um, if you're isolated as like a loan site, like, you know, like a loan incident, loan signing. As a day, it's good. We've got our number one target. We've got them for a relatively decent price for, you know, young English midfielders or young English players in general. Alex Awobi was like 34 million. Theo Walcott was a 20 odd million a good few years ago. Sean Longstaff was friggin' valued at 50 million two years ago. Um, so for the price, I think it's a bargain. English tax obviously hasn't come into play. Um, I'm expecting the deal and maybe, because it's such a long-term deal, I'm expecting to maybe be rife with a couple of clauses, i.e. like relegation clause. Um, maybe a clause in the sense of like, if a Champions League team come in for him or a European team come in for him, um, Europe, like Europe, European football team come in for him, um, maybe that might be different. Like it was, wasn't the Grealish contract. Obviously they said if Aston Villa didn't get in the Champions League, which was unlikely. If a Champions League team came in for him, then he could go if they offered him the money. So maybe there's going to be clauses like that. I'm expecting it. Joe's only 21. So he's got his whole career ahead of him. I really hope that him and Graham Jones work well together. We know that Graham Jones is very attacker minded, very tactically aware. We saw it in the Euros with Graham. Um, obviously, he had a part in the co in coaching, you know, as the tactical coach for England in the summer. So we did really, really well there. Really, really well. Really, really well <laughs> there. Um, so hopefully, he can work well with him. I'm not sure what role he's going to occupy yet. I don't know whether it's going to be the case of he's just going to come back in as a centre mid like he was. Or maybe just behind the forward line. Um, we're not going to. I'm not sure what formation we're going to go into this season, based on the players that are available. 
and we haven't also brought in a player that's going to adjust the system in a sense so we're just going to go with a back five that's what we've done all pre-season um so hopefully George just you know comes in and fits into there nicely which I'm expecting him to do but I'm over the moon he's here really really happy he seems happy the club seems happy it's just a little bit of an injection of positive positivity for the fans that we haven't got at the moment like because it is so flat and so boring so over the moon i know he's not available for west ham but let's go into west ham this sunday just the fans are gonna be back in which is gonna be amazing hopefully you know the reception isn't too much of animosity i know there will be and that's absolutely we're more than you know what's the word we're more than allowed and validated to have that animosity towards steve bruce towards ashley towards the club in general but we're geordies we're gonna love it it's gonna be the first time all the fans have been back from literally year oh wait over a year and a half um because obviously there was only a little bit at sheffield united so let's go for it let's start off the season well like we did last season against west ham as well and hopefully we get a win come on you maggies